So October, November 2018, paper six, variant one. Uh, a student is finding the spring constant K of a spring by two methods. So two different methods are used. Figure 1.1 shows how the apparatus is used. The method one is on the figure 1.1 measure the unstretched length. So using a ruler or the scale, you have to measure like this is a soft copy. So you won't, you will not get the accurate answer. But in uh, exam, as you will have the hard copy, you will use your ruler or the scale and measure this length. But remember one thing like that, another common mistake from student that normally we are used to measure the length in centimeter. Like when we are using the ruler or the scale, we measure in centimeters. So example, if it was 2.4 centimeter, directly students see 2.4 and write 2.4, then it, it is wrong. Why? Because you can see here, they mention answer in millimeter. So what answer you will get in centimeter to convert into millimeter, you have to multiply by 10. So it will be equal to 24 millimeters. Yeah, that's right, Prophet. So the idea is because we are used to, uh, like no, commonly we use centimeter instead of millimeter, that's why. But most of the measurements are in millimeter in this paper. The student attached the spring to a clamp as shown and he hangs the 300 gram mass. As you can see, he measured the le length of a spring, new length of a spring, which is 53. Calculate the extension. So how we calculate the extension L minus L naught means the original length. Say the original length is 22 and uh, this length is 53. So 53 minus 22 that will be equal to 31. So this will be equal to 31. Calculate the value for a spring constant, which is F divided by E. So three divided by 31. This will give us the value of a spring constant, which is 0 0.096. Write your answer in three significant figures. So I can write 0 0.097, but I use three significant figure, that's why. 0.0968. This is one of the method student tried. The second method, the student pulls the mass down for a short distance and release so that he uh, it oscillate up and down. Figure 1.3 shows the time for 10 complete oscillation. Record the time for 10 oscillation. So it is a stopwatch. 3.46 seconds are there for 10 oscillations. But if we need time for one complete oscillation, so the total time divided by number of oscillation, so this will be T divided by 10. So total time is 3.46 and number of oscillation are 10. So it will it's divided by 10. So it will be 0 0.34, six seconds. Then we'll find the value for T squared. So after getting a value of T, which is 0 0.34, 0 0.346 seconds. Don't forget to write the unit So 0 0.346 seconds. Then we square this number to so 0 0.346 square. That is equal to 0 0.12 or 0 0.1197, which is 0 0.12. 0 0.12 and then second square, because this is T. This one is T square, so unit is second square. Then we substitute the values that by this formula, the spring constant K equal to 0 0.04 multiplied by mass, which is 0 0.3 divided by T square, which is 0 0.12. So when we divide them, we'll get the value for K, which is 0.1. So one of the, like with this second method, it is 0.1. And the first method, when we calculated the value for K, it was 0 0.0968. So if I round this off, like if I round this off, this will also be 0 0.1. So means two values are same or equal to each other within the limits of experimental accuracy. State and explain whether 
your two values of k are same within limit of experimental accuracy. So what we will say, what is the expected observation uh, result? So we will say, yes, the two values, you can just mention the two values or you can mention two values are close or nearly the same or within limits of experimental accuracy. But this answer depends on, answer for this part depends on uh, like your result. If your state value does not match so, match, so say no, it does not, or within limit of experimental accuracy, two values are not equal to each other. A student state that repeating a method one with a different masses would improve the reliability of K. Suggest additional values of the M that uh, you would use when repeating the experiment. So what we can, because uh, as you can see, the first experiment student directly to 300 grams. And he also, and he measured the extension of a 300 gram. So what student can repeat, student can with, repeat with different set, like student can repeat from 50 to 100 or 50 to 200 grams or 50 to 400 grams, he can repeat. So we just have to state the range or set of loads which we should take to repeat the experiment. So state additional values of the mass that could be used uh, when repeating the experiment and checking the reliability of the result. So we can mention, we repeat with different values, like five different values, such as 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, and 300. So the last part, we can select the set of uh, loads, such as 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, and 300. Because when we repeat the experiment, when we repeat the experiment with different set of loads, we can identify the errors or the sources of the error. We can rectify by using the different set of values.